Good to go? All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kate. Welcome to our Sunday class with Guy Finley. You are joining us here in Merlin, Oregon. Um, and wherever you are around the world, well, you, of course, here in the room, but we know we have an online audience as well. So hello to all of you uh, tuning in from wherever you are on GoToWebinar, Facebook, YouTube. We're glad that you joined us today. If you're here for the first time, our format for today is that Guy will come on in just a moment and give a one-hour talk. We'll take a short five-minute break. We'll come back for part two of class, which is an open Q&A discussion time with all of you online, all of you in the room. So I hope you'll be able to stay for the full session. Uh, it should go anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. Um, if not, if you have to drop off at some point, uh, you can come back and get the replay on all of our channels later. Um, all of those will go up today. If you're in the room and you have a cell phone, if you could please check really quick, make sure that it's off. If you're online and you have any tech issues during the broadcast, just reach out to us in the chat area, the question box, depending on where you are. Send an email to support at guyfinley.org and one of us will help you. Um, I also just want to make a quick note that there was a special writing for today's class and I sent a link to that um, in the reminder email that went out for GoToWebinar. It's also in the description area for Facebook and YouTube already and it, it should be in the chat area for GoToWebinar as well. So if you want to go ahead and get that ready so that when Guy reads it, you're all set with your own copy, that would be great. All right, um, I think I went over everything, so let's go ahead and get started with class. I'll read the title and the key lesson and we'll... Well, Guy will take it away. Our topic today is, remember this one simple action and help set yourself free. Here's the key lesson. If, by the light of remembering and considering what is timeless, holy, and true, the heart is warmed and gradually inflamed, then the following must be true, even if yet to be seen. Within us must dwell some sort of celestial kindling. What else can explain how such a flame is created, let alone serve as a light in the darkness of the soul, uniting the twain, making of them as one? Good morning, everyone. I'm just curious, technically, when Kate is reading the key lesson, do the people online see it or do they just see you? They would normally, but today, no, because I had to be up there and I couldn't do both at once. I see. But when Eric is back and... Yeah. Really back. Okay, good. That's what I want. That's what I want. So... How many times do you have this interior, not so pleasant upwelling that if it were summarized in a couple words, it would be, oh no, not again, not him, not her, not this, not that weather, not my health, not, 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 so that you're basically tied up in knots. knots. <laughs> and I alluded to this, and I can't make it clear enough. You believe and feel that it's natural to be in knots. And you know nothing, you know nothing about knots. Either the Adverb, did I get that right? It's not this, not that. I think it's right. Neither the adverb nor the feeling that comes all the time. Where does the feeling of not come from? We're going to look at it deeply today. Because behind all of that, oh, why me? Now what's going to happen? is hidden a very, on one hand, dark secret, 
But on the other hand, hidden in that darkness is a light that once you're able to understand the nature of these knots, of this self that's all tied up, you can begin to work at what this talk is entitled, a simple action to help set yourself free. Before I tell you the first little story, I have three of them and a special writing. I want to ask you a question, a simple question. And everything depends upon your honesty, which requires you being here, not measuring what I'm saying, but looking at whether or not what I say matches your experience. Can you see that as long as you meet life from not, without understanding anything at all about it, that your life will be spent serving not, and your life will come to not, both N-O-T and K-N-O-T, yes or no? So then in essence, and I can't describe this strongly enough, one day God willing, it'll hit, one day God willing a ton of bricks will fall on you. Right now you're running so fast, there's not a chance any brick can fall on you at all. So busy with life are you and you don't even know what life is. The sensation of life is not life. The sensation of life is a trap. It's a lie that is perpetuated by an order of consciousness that only knows itself through sensation and doesn't know itself in any other way so that it pursues sensation. And it doesn't just pursue sensation by itself, it pursues sensation it knows which means your life is spent wandering in a labyrinth without recognizing such, where you keep coming to the same point where the minotaur is there, the beast, and it slays you, and then you get to start the whole journey again and again and again. You have to see it. So the question is, if it's true, that without me even knowing it, the minute that my mind reacts, that in that moment my destiny is set according to what I identify with, my destiny is determined by the partner I have in each moment. Remember we talked about partners. How do I change my destiny? The first thing is to understand that you are presently complicit in all of these dead ends. It doesn't seem to be a dead end when we reach it because the mind when it reaches, it always has another street, another avenue to go down so that it can pursue what it sets out to look for. I don't know what book it was in. It was a story about a lion cub that I wrote before The Lion King, I might add. But the basis of the story was a, a lion cub, almost along the lines of the ugly duckling, had been separated from its pride when a heard of a, 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 a gang of hyenas got in there and separated everybody out and everybody fled, even mama. She lost track of the cub. The cub just went under a bush and that was it. And the cub, not even knowing what it was yet, its eyes were still closed, starts mewing and looking around. And fortunately, for the sake of this little cub, some warthogs hear it going mew, mew, mew like that. And don't ask me how it happens. It's my story. When you have your stories, it can happen the way you want them to happen. Somehow or other, one of the mama warthogs took the little cub under its massive teeth <laughs> and carried it off to the warthog heaven, which is a dirt hole. <laughs> it's natural to warthogs. And it raised this little warthog as its own. It raised this little lion as its own. But you can understand, can't you, that a warthog has a certain nature. It roots around with its nose. And if you don't have big tusks and a tough nose, it's going to be very tough on you to do what warthogs do. And it was very tough on that little lion as it was growing up, trying to do the things that warthogs do. For one thing, when it ran, it couldn't put its little tail up in the air the way warthogs do. Have you ever seen that? And so a certain discontent grew in this warthog, in this little lion. <laughs> uh, 
that had mistaken itself to be a warthog. And as a result of this, and this is true, bit by bit when they would go out on their foraging trips, the little lion would wander further and further away from the group. Because one thing, when it tried to make a noise like a... It would make a... You weren't there. You don't know. And one day when it had wandered further and further away from the group, off in the distance it heard a massive roar. Now this cub didn't know what a roar is. It had no connection to anything that resonated like that in its life. It never heard that before. But within it was a corresponding resonation. And when it heard that and felt what it did within itself, at that moment, that little cub, without even knowing why, had to do what? It had to go find out, what, what is this thing that I'm drawn to? And you can also imagine, if you can, that as it was drawing closer and closer and looking at what were these massive creatures, it didn't know exactly what it was looking at, and yet it still felt as if it needed to become part of that society instead of the society of the warthogs. Yes or no? The exact same truth holds for you. There come moments in your life when you are reminded briefly of another order of being, of another nature. It's too brief presently for you because you don't know yet how to extend the relationship between these similarities that resonate as they do at the same level. And the reason that it isn't presently capable for you to explore the possibility, because yes or no, you see, we talk about it all the time. You see an outstanding moment And it's not necessarily a beautiful sunlit day. You could walk by a tree stump on a cold, foggy day and see one little tiny mushroom coming out with a different head on it that you've seen. And you can see, God, that that must be what it's like to be a, a leprechaun. Because sure, I feel like I'm back in Ireland or Scotland. Sorry, Fiona. And there's a resonance, isn't there? And you can't separate the the corresponding resonation between what is seen and what sees it from the fact that obviously within the observer, the observed was there before and now it recognizes itself and it feels itself to know in a different way that it has a completely different nature, different than the one that was walking down the street and thinking about what she didn't do or why that didn't go the way it was supposed to. But to the point of this first little story... On one hand, I can hear a distant roar. I know, I, I know in my life, at, at five or six years old, I could hear all the laughter and the conversations and the acquisitions and the pursuits. I hear all of it, and it, every last bit of it was hollow to me. And your work is gradually to see how hollow it is for you to follow the incessant reminders of what? On one hand, I am drawn to that roar. I'm drawn to another order of myself that isn't decapitated by life every time something goes wrong. But on the other hand, I'm drawn to the life that I keep finding myself in and I don't know what to do because that's the only life I know. The one I'm drawn to that I don't know, I'm I'm terrified because it seems to require leaving my family, meaning my warthogs. And I'm not calling your family warthogs. That's up for you to say whether or not they are. But I'll tell you this. Sleeping human beings are warthogs. Every last one of them will rend you the moment that you don't give them or do for them what what they want and expect from you. And you've seen it a hundred times and you ignore it. You ignore the world that is at war again. 
believing somehow if I can just isolate myself with proper circumstances, I'll remain secure. And it doesn't matter whatever happens to the rest of the world. All that matters is what happens to me as a result of what's going on in the world. That's a warthog. And all of us are warthogs like that. Because on one hand, we are drawn to something that recognizes, you know, they say never forget. Everybody forgets. Everybody forgets that war leads to war. War has never brought peace. Just as the war that we have with life has never brought peace to us, regardless of how many skirmishes we've won when we acquired this or got there or went there and were able to forget momentarily what it was like to be a human being who was always going, oh no, oh no, here's what I need to do. What's that? I better get over here. So that until we start to understand that we are on one hand, yes or no, we're drawn to something higher, we wouldn't be here, would we? But it's so minuscule compared to the draw of the world. The draw of thinking about my problems, about my possibilities, about what I'm supposed to become. And incidentally, in punishing myself because I haven't become spiritual like I imagine myself, having forgotten entirely that I don't need to imagine myself as a spiritual human being if I just listen to the roar that seems to be outside of myself but is actually occurring within me at all times. Yes? yes. So I have a story. I'll dial it back just a little bit to help you understand this being drawn. Well, what's going on? So here's uh, two men. They know each other pretty well, and they're at work. And one of them is pretty much always complaining. He says, I don't know what to do. I keep, I walk through that same neighborhood on the way. I walk to that same, I walk through that neighborhood on the way every time to work. And at one out of five times, there'll be some gang of ruffians. Do they even use that word ruffians anymore? Lately, I've been saying words that I know nobody knows what they mean, <laughs> which is a problem. And I always get beat up or robbed or intimidated. I'm so tired of it. What, what can I do? And his friend says, we've discussed this. Stop going there. <laughs> you know, it irritates me every time you say that. Why? Well, it's easy for you to say. What do you mean easy for me to say? Look, we've talked about this at least a thousand times now. You have to remember to take the transit past that gang-ridden neighborhood on A Street and get off at the next street above it on B Street. How difficult is that to remember? He says, I don't think you understand. I'm having a very hard time remembering that. That's hard for me to understand given all the problems and pain that you go through. How can you possibly forget? The man says, my favorite bakery is on A Street. You get it? What's his destiny? Until he understands that he is literally condemned to serve only what he is given to remember by his functions, by his appetites, by the memories of appetites that seem, seek to be filled with pleasure again until he understands he's condemned by the reactions that make him forget what happens to him when he goes there. What can possibly happen to this man other than spend his life having four days of pleasure at the bakery and on the fifth day get his goose cooked? Yes? Yeah. Now, maybe that's good enough. And it is for most. Honestly, it is. But for some, there is a gradual recognition. My bakery of the moment. What's your bakery of the moment? Do you understand? And, and it's, it's always the same bakery. It just has different shelves with stuff on it. My bakery of the moment is the, is the pleasure of my security. My bakery of the moment is my certainty that he or she needs to be like this so I can get that. You fill in the blanks and what you'll understand is until we realize that we can only think towards any condition we're in, any problem, 
until we realize we can only think towards that condition with what we already know about it. We're going to always meet those moments where we're on the train and we get off at A Street because that's all I know how to think about when I see the usual place that I need to get off and get into so I can get my pleasure. Yes, please? So how is that man? You could say he's addicted to A Street, couldn't you? How is he ever going to get off on the next exit, the next street above A? How is he ever going to do that unless what? Unless what? I'm going to have to remember that. It's no one's fault that I get off on A, on A Street and get beat up. But I want to blame everything and everyone around me, don't I, for that? So my destiny, meaning the repeated repetition of some kind of pain, angst, anxiety, is built into an order of consciousness that is drawn to what it wants, when it wants it, regardless what it does to me, when I am in the hands of its memory. You and I, to whatever degree it's true, do not understand that we live in a ceaseless state of memory. When things go wrong, do you not immediately know why they've gone wrong? Please. And how do I know immediately what's gone wrong? Because not only was I drawn to A Street, but I was drawn to that place in my mind by something that had not only led me there, but the minute that I find myself being punished in pain, having these negative reactions, immediately I know exactly why that's the way it is, including blaming myself for being someone so stupid or so is spiritually ignorant as to keep forgetting and keep forgetting. So that judgment of myself is a memory. And it's produced by forgetting the truth of myself. Please? And that's the rub. My life, your life, is run by a nature that has its own preferred partner in moments of pain. And it wants to hang out at all times with that partner because that partner that is the cause of its pain promises a pleasure to come if it just gets off on A Street because if you go to B Street, you're not going to have what you need to be happy. Yes, please? So this partner of mine is what? Come on, I don't know if we're making the transition to go, who is my partner? My, my partner is this conditioned nature. It's something that never stops talking to me and not only never stops talking to me, but drawing me to what it ensures me is going to liberate me from the relationship I have with it. My whole life is being remembered for me. What do I attend to in any given moment? Most of us don't even know what we attend to. We only know what we experience when we go to what our attention is given to. So just to prove that you're not alone, we're going to go with Christine to the doctor. I use a doctor story. This would be short and sweet. So Christine, who is a working person like yourself, God willing, she's kind of falling under the thumb of a, of a certain necessary stage. She goes to see the good doctor who represents wisdom. And she says, you know what, I, I, I can't stop beating myself up. I, I don't know what to do. Because I realize we've talked about this over and over and over again. I forget. 
It's not like I don't know. But the next thing I know, I'm on A Street. I should have had Christine be the person who got off on A Street. And I'm tired of it. I love the bakery. <laughs> I'm drawn to the, to the smell of the croissant. The bear claws. <laughs> Almond paste. I'm, I love that, but I, 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 I'm so tired all the time, I forget. And even, she says, I even set an intention. Because I know my tendency. But I fall asleep. What can I do? Wide awake. He looks at her, he says, it's simple. Remember sooner. Remember sooner. Now, what does that mean? She says, I, I'm discouraged. I can't. What am I supposed to remember? Now we're talking about how do we take this idea and put it into real time. Do you understand? Not some stupid, phony baloney, fancy schmancy, give me your dough and I'll deliver you from your pain. More intellectual garbage. What do I need to do to remember sooner? She says, I'm totally discouraged. And you know what he said to her? He said, you have to remember that discouragement doesn't belong to you. You have to remember, fear doesn't belong to you. And in order to do that, you're going to have to start investigating why it is that for you, the bakery shop is any negative state that promises you a time when you won't have that appetite again. It is extraordinary. Who tells me, who tells you that you, how do I say, who tells you that the wise thing to do is to repeat this pain. Because that's what we do, isn't it? Who tells me the wise thing to do is to be afraid again? Who tells me there's wisdom in revisiting the past so that I can relive when I was victimized by someone or something else that hurt me? Isn't there some kind of... How can I be... Am I not drawn to remember what validates the reaction I have. Yes or no? By what? See, these are the questions that have to begin to formulate in your mind so that instead of, as it's always going on, what happens? Here comes a moment I don't want, and when the moment comes that I don't want, suddenly I'm handed everything I need to remember how to get through it. Let's bring the special writing up, please. Read along with me, and those of you in the room, be wise to do the same. It's called The Sooner the Better. As we realize there is no destination in our life towards which we run that isn't disappearing the moment we depart for it, and at the same time, there's nothing in the universe that isn't being ceaselessly renewed by the divine forces responsible for its creation. We are awakened to a stunning truth. Nothing real can be attained in this world of passing time, nor can it be lost. I'm going to hold there for a moment. There has never been one thing that you have been headed toward, any destination, and you can see it for yourself that even as you arrive there, it is disappearing. Because what am I headed for other than a condition I've imagined that will release me from the pain I'm in of living in a mind that constantly revisits this suffering so I imagine what to become. Whatever I've imagined I need to become begins to disappear the moment I approach it because the sense of self that's derived from it belongs to the conditions it's imagined. Conditions evaporate. So whatever my future is, it's disappearing the moment I get there. Please, do you see it? On the flip side, there is an absolute certainty 
energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed, that nothing that is created remains in place, which is why when I get there, it's not there, because it's going through a constant transformation itself, and it's ceaseless. And if I actually understand that the divine forces are never endingly bringing an end to something at the same time a new beginning, then what am I getting to? What am I trying to reach? Which brings that last part. Nothing real can be attained in this world of passing time. But on the other hand, it can't be lost either. All of which means that our hopes in things seen is in the end futile. Now, I get it. That doesn't taste good. Because all I have, listen to this, is what I believe is a future that is other than my past. But the future that I believe is other than my past is a reconfiguration of my past and produced in a form of a memory that says when you get here, you'll have that. Why? Because I had that the last time, only now I've imagined it differently. Do you see it? All such hope of things seen is like looking for our reflection in a wave that breaks on the shore. Do you understand I can't teach you? You have to see, and you have to see it sooner. How many times you have given yourself entirely over to a string of thoughts, a wave of emotions that look at the moment you're in and produce in front of your eyes what seems to be a new possibility when all it is is a memory dressed as a new possibility. And you look at it and even as you give yourself as you're drawn to that world, even as you give it yourself to it, it has proven itself empty. Why? Because you're going to have to do it again and again and again and again. You're going to enter into that river of dreams and the destination it promises and one day see yourself getting ready to step into it and instead of remembering what the river of dreams gives you to remember in terms of a brighter tomorrow, to realize that anything in that river of dreams is already dead and gone. And I have to remember that. Again, I have to remember that Transition. We're going to do a little work together on this talk, a little bit like a Sunday. Are you uh, Wednesday? Are you everybody all right here? Yeah. yeah. So boom, and boom doesn't have to be bang. Boom can be looking at my comp- Boom can be looking at the news, which isn't which isn't getting seemingly less and less, is it? More and more dramatic, right? Boom. Now the minute there's a boom, why is there a boom? What's the bang to the boom? No, no, come on. What's the bang of the boom? What does this mean? Forget the fact that millions and billions of human beings will suffer. What does this mean? Yes or no? Don't you lie. How is it going to affect me? So that when these unwanted moments come, we don't see it, but I want you to see it with me. I'll slow down so that you, I don't pushing stuff too fast. What, what happens in that moment? What does my mind do? We don't hear it say, oh my God, what does this mean to me? Or maybe we do, and we think that's natural. What does it do? Try to see this. In moments like that, we're handed a talking book. Do you remember talking books? I think they still have them for kids. Yeah. We're handed a talking book. And the, the, the extraordinary thing is we're just handed this talking book, and by itself it opens up to a page that does for us what we need done, which is it begins to explain the pain in our reaction, and it explains, it actually talks to us, it explains the pain in our reaction by reminding us of the reasons why we need to feel the way we do. Imagine such a talking book. You are. This unconscious nature is a talking book filled with page after page of itemized cleverly defined and defined memories that they open up 
all by themselves, and when they open up, not only they tell us why we feel the way we do, but at the bottom of the page is the exercise, and it says, here's what you need to do to free yourself from this moment. Do you see it? And here's what's written on the top of each and every one of these pages. You must have forgotten this, so let me remind you. You must have forgotten this, so let me remind you. And now we're going to go through it. I have a little list. You must have forgotten this, so let me remind you. No one speaks to you in those tones. Do you ever have a book open like that? Have a reaction? Suddenly somebody's disrespecting. They're triggering me. Boom. No one. I open the. I don't even open the book. It just opens by itself. No one talks to you like that. How about, <clears throat> you must have forgotten this, but let me remind you, you deserve better than this. Do you know that page? Yes or no? Why are you so quiet? How about this? You must have forgotten this, so let me remind you, if you don't rush, if you don't get anxious here, you're going to miss out on something very important. Something bad is going to happen to you if you don't rush. Have you ever heard, had the book open to that? How about this? You must have forgotten this, but you've always been a mess. You've always been a failure. And then the page right next to that flips over and it says, you must have forgotten this, but you're never going to succeed. So why even try? Open that. You ever hear that page talk to you? Or how about this one? You must have forgotten this, but the best thing to do right now is to look the other way. Don't, don't see that these people, these friends, these relationships, don't see the world the way it is. Look this way. Which is, if you look this way, here's what you need to take from the world so you're not bothered by the world anymore. What, what are some of the things that you have opened that book to that have said, you must have forgotten this, but let me remind you, Terry. Everyone should approve you. You must have forgotten this, but there's something wrong with anybody that doesn't think you're a genius. Anybody else? Really? Gotta figure this out. Huh? You must have forgotten this, but it's up to you to sort this out. Yes or no? Anybody else? This is so critical. You see, I don't know why inwardly you can't just remember on the spot how many things talk to you all the time. You must, you must have forgotten that unless you are the authority here, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. You must have forgotten that. Therefore, what's the action? Pretend to be something you're not. I'm going to leave you to you because apparently you don't want to work like that. The fact is very clear to me. Something remembers my life for me. And I don't know it's being remembered for me and that I'm drawn to the partner of that part of my consciousness to get me through whatever the pain may be in that moment. What did the doctor say to Christine? Remember what sooner? See, we love ideas because they become thoughts that become anchors. And then we can call on the anchor in what seems to be a storm, failing to understand that the thought itself by itself has no anchorage that it has to constantly go looking for something to secure it. So thought, trying to say, well, I'm going I'm to I'm remember myself. Failing to see that the words remember myself, failing to see that the idea that something in me is drawn to these places where I get beat up, just remembering that doesn't change the consciousness at all, does it? Something else is required. That's what this talk is about. What does it mean to remember sooner? Remember what? This is where it's so important. When I say remember what, our mind, depending on our conditioning, will run through a a litany, literally, of all the things that we need to remember. (laughs) And those of you that play golf, you know what that's like. (laughs) to have 50 things to remember before I swing. I'm dead in the water. Remember what? Because 
isn't, isn't what I need to remember in every given moment predicated by the kind of pain I'm in? Please, do you understand the question? He's like this. I'm given to remember the solution relative to my experience with him or people like him. I'm suffering over my health. I'm given to remember what I saw my mother and father do and what my own functions do in their fear of their own demise, telling me I should worry and be all kinds of carry on with, and God help me, and go talk to everybody about what's wrong with me. I'm given to remember that the best thing to do in, in, in moments of conflict like this is to complain. I'm given complaints to remember. Please, don't you? When you open the book, don't you hear complaints? And isn't every complaint connected to what you need to remember to change the condition you're complaining about? I want you to see the, the movement of this thing so that you can begin to realize the idea of remembering sooner has nothing to do with remembering this platitude, that quote, this thought, that belief, this faith. Nothing to do with any of those things. It's not remembering sooner isn't remembering Christ or Moses or Lao Tzu or whatever Buddhist. What it would Buddha, see? That's the whole world. What would be, what would Buddha do? What would Christ do? And then what, what? What do I do in that moment? What do I do? Come on, come on. I try to remember Wallace. See, what did Christ do? Well, you know, he, yeah, he, he, would, he, would, he said, love your enemies, but he also threw over the tables there in the temple. He got angry. Now I don't know which Christ to be. <laughs> which God am I meant to be in this moment? So here's the main point. To remember yourself isn't in thought at all. And to remember sooner is to not go into thought to try to figure out how to remember sooner. It is a clear-cut, instantaneous action. And your work, as you already know, I suspect, is that the action is inherent in the condition that suggests it. The action is inherent in the condition that suggests it. When I have this book open up and it says you must have... And it says you must have forgotten that you're not supposed to have these loud clicking noises while you're talking. Because what's wrong with everybody that they can't figure it out? Do you... Yes or no? Or if you're someone who's tried to figure it out, what's wrong with me that I can't figure it out? So that instead of the action inherent in the condition, which is to do what? Which is to watch the reaction, which is to see what comes up in you as a result. That's what you must remember sooner. You must remember sooner to be in every moment the whole of yourself in that moment. Anything else is a fool's errand. Now, we have to use words. I get it. This is the way teachings are conveyed, although a lot of the conveyance of what is true is done directly by a certain kind of energy. An energy. John, it's not your fault. Don't get anxious, man. We lost everything? Okay. Look, 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 look. Try to see. Your mind wants to scramble. Doesn't it? That's what it means to be function dependent. That's what it means to have no real center to yourself because everything is drawn left and right according to what part of you is reacting relative to your role in that moment. But what if your role in that moment is not to try to remember how to make the moment go away, but your role in that moment is to recognize every moment is saying, if you remember yourself sooner, you will see something more deeply 
And if you see something more deeply, you will want to remember yourself sooner and sooner instead of give yourself away to every reaction that tells you, here's what happened, here's what you need to do. Yes? Yeah. Now, we have to have something to work with. So I'm going to give you an idea of what it really means to remember yourself, not just sooner, but in large. Here's this pop in the speakers. Here's my father denigrating me. Here's someone speaking to me in tones I don't want. Here's a call from the doctor. Uh Uh-oh. You know the drill. Always, oh no, yes or no. Now, I have to just lay it out. I can't uh, integrate this for you. You have to see the necessity for an integrated action, for an integrated action. If I hear some news and instantaneously the book opens up and it says, here's what you must have forgotten when you learn about your mortality, you're supposed to panic. You look in the mirror, something says, here's what you've forgotten, You're not supposed to look that way. You better go get some kind of surgery. You better do something so that you don't look like that anymore because I don't want to see you looking like that anymore. Something's talking to you. (laughs) So in this instance, when I have this kind of reaction, born of what? And all reactions have a certain measure of comparison in them. My mind by itself has sought out in its memories why these moments shouldn't happen because I saw my mother when this happened to her and she became an alcoholic. I saw my father and he fell into an endless depression. Fill in the blanks. You see, this is the problem. You don't understand. The bank of this unconscious nature didn't just begin with you. You're adding to it, I might add. You're further conditioning it. But we're completely conditioned by being in relationship with a partner that has no part in real life but pulls us out of it so that it can have its life and our sense of self correspondingly. My mind remembers. It goes into that time I had with her. It goes back to this place where this pain took place. And my mind remembers by itself. And it brings up these associations. And as it brings up these associations, lo and behold, what begins to happen to my body? My body doesn't... It can tense up by itself. The body has its own memory. The emotional parts have their own memory. And when they work by themselves apart from each other, each one supports the reaction and the memory of the one that triggered that initial action. So that you're in a conspiracy of functions that only function the way they do because they're gathered together by a broad, unconscious nature, producing the, the, the firmness, the certainty. Aren't you certain when you have a memory about something? Aren't you? Do you know that no negative state can continue itself in your life without something in you remembering why it's necessary to be there? Because it's killing you. So something is remembering why it's necessary to kill myself. But I don't see it. Why? Because I never bring all of myself into that moment. Not my mind telling me why I need to be afraid, but my own emotional parts recognizing that my mind is causing an upheaval in them, a painful series of actions. And my body is getting more and more tense because my emotions are telling me, oh my God, this pain is going to be unending. So that there is a conspiracy in a divided consciousness. And the conspiracy is to keep the sense of self that it delivers you into in place. As opposed to, if I can remember sooner, let me bring myself into, take a nice deep breath, the real here and the real now. Again, these are words. Here's something happens. I need to be here now. The real here and now doesn't exist apart from the marriage of all of your parts. No marriage of the mind, the heart, and the body. No unity of awareness that comes from their marriage 
You're not in the here and you're certainly not in the now. What is the real here? I've, I've wanted to talk about this for a long time. Do I have time? I do. What does it mean to be here? What is here? You, you use the words, don't you? Be here now. It was a big book, wasn't it, a long time ago? Yeah. Be here now. I even wrote something, uh, The Power of the Present Moment. Power of Now, actually, before someone else did that. What is, it, what is here? What do you think here is? Do it right now. Here is where everything is intersecting in my body. Here is the complete sensation of myself in a body that is produced by all the influences taking place. Endless stream of influences. There's light, there's sound, there's color, there's smell, there's taste. All of these sensations are taking place all at once in this, in quotes, body. In this instrument that was designed to take all of these impressions into itself. You understand that, don't you? Please? Yes. This body, what, what's the point of the body? Well, it's not to get off on A Street because it smells food. It's to be able to remember that when I get off on A Street, I'm going to have a heartache. But I can't remember that. Why? Because all I am is one function at that moment. Please? Right. Here is Here is where, how shall I say this? Here, meaning do it work, fully sensing myself, my body, everything in it. Here is, in fact, inseparable from now. What is now? Now is the awareness of here. Here is, I'm in my body, all of my senses, as, as best I can, be present to them. That's here. Every creature on this planet is here. <laughs> That's what's so amazing. There's no creature that isn't here, because if they're not here, they're not connected to the life-giving forces, the impressions. Here is where all of the impressions are gathered. But what good are all of the impressions being gathered, all of the senses of myself, unless I'm in the now, meaning unless I am aware of that intersection? If I'm not aware of the interaction, I'm not here or I'm not now. And if I'm not here and now, what in the name of God am I going to remember other than something telling me, not here, not now, there and later? So, point being... Nice deep breath. Let's do the work. It's very uncomfortable to be here and now. Because I want to know what's here and I want to know why it's here now. And not only do I want to know what's here, mostly I want to get out of here. Meaning mostly I want to get out of, mostly, <laughs> poof, <laughs> mostly, mostly I want to escape or change the experience of the moment. Yes or no? So can I want to change the experience of myself in the moment without something telling me this isn't the right experience. Remember we started this talk? That's not how you're supposed to feel. On the other hand, the book of memory says, here's how you're supposed to feel. And it starts telling me what I have to do, who I have to be, where I have to go in order to change the experience of the moment. To be here and now, to collect all of yourselves is to understand there is nothing needful to be changed in the experience of the moment. There's nothing that needs to be changed in remembering yourself. Why? Because if I'm properly here and I'm properly in the now, the awareness of that is what I am. 
The awareness of that is aware of everything coming into the here and now, calling itself here and now. Everything moves into and through remembering yourself as opposed to trying to remember what you're supposed to move to and get through in order to change the way you feel. And because we're so so poorly developed to be able to attend to ourselves the way I'm describing, I have to be able to attend to myself, don't I? And I believe that attending to myself is attending to what I'm given to remember. That is not attending to yourself. That is another order of self telling you to attend to what it wants you to remember so that it can reincarnate itself. So what's the exercise? Remember what? Remember what? Make it practical. Remember, I get up, I, I sit up, I'm laying in bed, my eyes open. Please, God, let me remember sooner. Let me be there in my bed with my eyes closed so that instead of being given who I am and what to do by all of the memories that flood in as a result of cascading experiences in my dreams, I understand, ah, I need to remember myself. I need to sit up on my bed and remember sooner. Remember that my task isn't to get out of bed or to want to go back to sleep. My task is to remember that something is trying to give me what to do and who to be so that I can get off into my day and get rid of the pain that was there when my eyes popped open. I'm sitting in my chair and the news comes on or I look at my bank statement or I get a phone call or an email. Please, God, let me remember sooner so that I don't let the fear of some memory telling me that unless this goes that way, everything is going the wrong way, So instead of that, I remember that's a lie. I remember sooner than every negative thought and feeling that wants to come in and define me. I remember sooner it's a lie. And then I remember I have to learn to give up the liar. I have to remember to see that's a lie, which is very difficult because that's the only life I know. I understand you don't understand that. The only life that sleeping human beings know is the lie they are given moment to moment about who they are and therefore what needs to be done that they remember is a requirement. You get busy with remembering sooner and you want to know the miracle? You'll remember sooner. Yeah, with God as my witness. Why? Because what am I remembering? I'm remembering that I already have a partner. It's not an intellectual uh, foy de hoy or whatever it is. It's not not, uh, kumbaya, kumbaya. I, I remember sooner that there's a light that dwells in the darkness that knows the darkness. And the more I remember sooner, the more I am brought into the more I'm brought back to the, to the divine pride. The more readily I tell the difference between the snort of a warthog and the roar of the interior spirit. Because I remember sooner. And the more I remember, the more I want to remember because I start to understand that's what safety is. That's what security is. Security isn't me being told to remember how I have to go reclaim this business. Security is the discovery that I need not claim anything. It's given to me in the moment when I fully remember myself and I'm in the true here and now where nothing can be added to myself and nothing can be taken from myself. What's the exercise? Will you, will you, did we communicate, will you work at that? God, if, if, if two times in the day you can remember sooner, you're off to the races. Because the minute you remember sooner, what has to have happened? I've been reminded. So that the light that's in the darkness doesn't become some fantasy. It becomes a fact for me. I was reminded to remember myself. And the more I agree to go along with that partner, the more I am remanded over to a nature that cannot act against itself. Let's take a break, come back and have our dialogue.
All right, everyone, welcome back to part two of our class. We're going to get started with an open dialogue with Guy here in just a moment. Um, so, but before we do that, while we let everyone get settled, I have just a quick announcement for you. Just wanted to remind you about a special promotion that we've had going on the last couple of weeks since Easter, actually. Um, we have a special package that is a, a combination of four Easter talks that we've put into this little e-course. And I'm going to put this up on the screen here so you can see it. Just a second. There you go. Um, and in this package, uh, what we've done is we've put together, like I said, these four talks. And three of the talks are ones from past Easter's uh, throughout the years, the last 20 years that Guy has given some of his best Easter talks on rebirth and uh, renewal. And then we added a fourth to it, which is our most recent Easter talk that we had with Guy. And we put it into this package called Awaken the Indwelling Light of Christ, The Journey Beyond Mind to the Heart of the Cross. And uh, the package includes the four talks, being able to watch them online, download the MP3s, get all the transcripts, and it's just a great way to um, work with the materials that we get here, you know, all of the, I, um, everything that we learn, and also um, support the foundation at the same time. So you can get access to this uh, package uh, for, by making a $10 donation. And today is the last day for this. So if you want to, if you haven't yet gotten that package and you would like to do that, uh, make a donation to support us and then receive this in return, you can go to guyfinley.org slash package and that will walk you through how you can make your donation. And you'll also see on that page um, the names of the talks that are included in the package. I'll just read them to you here because I love these, uh, these titles. So talk one is don't let this unseen form of darkness steal the light out of your life. Talk two is the four trials of the heart required for rebirth in Christ. And talk three is ask divine love to give you a fearless heart. And talk four was the name of the package, which was the title of our talk recently, uh, the Easter talk, Awaken the Indwelling Light of Christ. So just wanted to give you a little preview of that. Um, do go to guyfinley.org slash package if you want to uh, get that package. And um, if you have any questions, just reach out to us in the uh, contact form on our website. All right, let's go ahead and bring Guy back on and get started with our open dialogue. And there he is. Hi, Guy. I'm barely hearing you, Guy. Um, can you keep talking and maybe John see if you Ding. need to adjust the volume? Hello, oh, that's better. hello, hello. Yes, yes, that's good. I All just right. called to say hello. <laughs> I just called. Okay, never mind. Anyway, are you ready to go? Yes, thank you. Okay. We have one hand up. We have uh, our stalwart, Fiona, over there in Scotland. She wants to speak with you. And for the rest of you, if you want to join in the discussion, if you're online on GoToWebinar, you can raise your hand. Just click or tap the hand icon, and that will let me know that you wish to speak. You can send a note into the question box. Um, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, just send a note in the chat area. And of course, everyone there in the room, if you want to speak, just go right up onto the mic, and Guy will let me know you're there. I'm going to go ahead and bring Fiona on to get us started. Hello, Kate. Hello, Guy. Hi, Fiona. Ever thankful for being having this opportunity to be able to listen to the talks. And I laughed out loud when you said about when in a problem, it's like, what Christ should I be right now? <laughs> it's so true. It's as if, and uh, just to bring in that with analogy of what you were talking about, that's all in the same street. That's all in the same street A, as soon as you're thinking about uh, anything like that. Exactly. And what's been fantastic is to be able to see a lot more, clearer and clearer, certainly just listening more and working more to see the, you know, street A, just to be the analogy of the laws. It's like the, whether something nice like the bakery and then further down the road getting beat up, which is inevitable, Yes. It's all the same law, and there is no actual space between them. Whereas, I it's like I have I divide up. Well, this is the space where the bakery is really nice, 
and then that's the space where I get beat up. Right. It's all exactly the same, same thing. It's all part of A Street. All part of A Street. And so seeing that, you're already in B Street. Um, and just and, and so what has been great, I'm grateful for after today particularly is it's given, it gives me more patience to just be in that. Oof. Gives me more patience to be in that space. Yes. It's so important, Fiona. I, I, we had this exercise as you listened. To remember sooner leads to a point where first you start to understand that any form of impatience is inseparable from this idea that something like whatever it is, ought not be happening to me. I ought not get beat up on A Street. That's where the pastries are. But it, it's, it is meant to begin a, a gradual but definitive interruption in our identification with thought. That's what remember sooner really means. Because the minute that you enter into the stream of thought, you've entered into the river of dreams the very moment and it is endlessly tempting because the river seems to promise to deliver you to some kind of salvation whether it's uh, salivating over a cookie or what you call rebirth same exact river same result over and over again so to remember sooner is to is to begin this process if you will realizing that if I'm, not, if I'm not present, if I'm not in the here and now, then I'm in the there and gone. I'm, I'm gone. I'm, I'm in thought. I'm just in thought. And one day one has to begin to actually remember when they find themselves having been dumped off in that terrible uh, stream that, that I got here because I, I didn't remember that if I enter into this thought about him or I go about this. If I, if I go downstream, I'm going downstream. End of story. And then the beauty of it is, and this is coming up in our upcoming talks in the Pines, if I step out of that, if I step out of that stream, by stepping out of it, I, by stepping out of it, by remembering sooner, I start to experience That's not static, John. I can't hear. I'll suffer. I don't mind. It's okay, but my wife is telling me, take the thing out. While I'm talking, maybe I can. Hello? Your true self is not a continuity. That's what thought does. It has reaction, reaction, reaction. Thinking, thinking, thinking all the time, all the time like that. Your your nature, who you really are, is a rebirth. There's no continuity in rebirth. There's just what is new, what is new, what is new, which is the intersection and the interaction of what is here and what is now. That's it. Now, how do you, in quotes, get there? For one thing, you have to stop trying to get anywhere. Because you wouldn't be trying to get someplace if you hadn't remembered that you shouldn't be where you are and that you need to get someplace else. You have to stop trying to get someplace. That's the, that's the trick. And start being where you are, what you are, with what you're given. That's your work. Now, how do I get there? By uh, dying to all the other stuff? <laughs> By negation. Look, how do I say this to you? Uh, you? You want to create here and now in your own image. Here and now is here and now. 
Here and now is not a creation. <laughs> Here and now is not a creation of yours. You are entering into the here and now that was there before you had a body. The awareness of a place is there before the place in it at the higher level. So, yes, Fiona, I tried to augment some of what you said and encourage you. I hope that you were able to stay on through all the popping my, my, we're going to call the, this foundation rice, uh, uh, sna- uh, rice Krispies. Yeah, snap, crackle, and pop. It definitely sparks a lot of lights within me as well, though. Fantastic. Thank you. You bet, Fiona. Um, Chris is at the microphone. Uh, Kate. Hi, my name is Chris. Just, you know, sometimes for me, I'm a visual person and just... Uh, something in the talk that I can concretely take with me help, helps me in my inner work. And for this talk, just thinking of the book of memories, like have you ever like been on a college campus and you see like, I don't know, a professor or something and they carry that book around. You always see them with the book. Well, that's like the book of memories. Every disturbance, just get it out thumb through the chapter, the chapter on family or kids or siblings or people who don't treat you the way and then you look up what you need to do to take care of that problem and it's all in the past and uh, it's not only ideas but I, I find for myself it's images too like the mind places images of what I need to do like even at night when you know you can't possibly be hungry but it's like flashing something that you need to go eat you know always something that you shouldn't have and then after you eat it is farther down the road of road a right past the bakery is the part where you get beaten up so um good good images from this talk today Over to you, Kate. I don't have any hands up in the queue. I don't have any written questions. So I guess we'll leave it to if anyone else in the room wishes to speak. Now's the time. Ellen is stepping up. Hello, I'm Ellen. And this talk brought it home once more that Ellen has to bite the bullet <laughs> and do the thing that she's been avoiding from the time she entered this work, so over 40 years. And that is ceaseless prayer. That's how you get ahead of everything. It's, you know, it's not enough to remember when you're in the pain. If, if you were always working to remember, you'd always be sooner. But Ellen doesn't want to do that because she just loves to slip into the comfort of thought. And just be in this, well, it's not safe, but it feels safe to her to just be thinking. It, it takes work to work to stay present all the time. So that that is my work. That's it. That's what needs to be done. Leah's coming up. Hi, my name is Leah. Tears came to my eyes in this talk. You talk about us being upside down. We're upside down. And when you spoke about um, the roar and this calling and 
you know, Leah's, Leah had the opportunity to be in many situations in her life and that she always felt something was wrong with her because she didn't fit in. She didn't belong. Why did all these other people seem like they fit in? And, mm-hmm. and I was an outsider all the time. And this is in situations with the most powerful people in industries or the wealthy or whatever it is. And it was never, I never felt I was, like I was always short, falling short, falling short. But that was the roar. <laughs> And it just, it just, it was, it was an emotional moment to see I had it upside down yeah. for 60 years. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for the roar. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Stranger in a strange land. And don't think that the lion cub didn't miss the warthogs. Tempted, you know, just a little digging with my nose. How bad could that be? (laughs) When you're drawn You mustn't be afraid to see that you're drawn to the world. It's you wishing that you weren't or you just complying completely that's the problem. There is no energy without friction. One of the topics we're gonna go into deeply for the talks in the pines. There's no energy without friction. And what do we spend our entire life seeking? Avoiding friction of any kind. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, Miss Kate. Oh, no. We had a hand go up. Okay. Special voice coming to us from Buffalo, New York. Oh, here comes. Here comes trouble. Here comes trouble. Here she is. Go ahead. Hello, guy. Hello, everyone there. <laughs> Hi, Joni. I love this. Yeah, I love this talk, and it dawned on me. I've been recently rereading uh, the Bible, and my favorite passage, my favorite gospel in the in the Bible, has always been John, and it starts out. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it occurred to me, everything you talked about today, this talk, was that, is that, is describe that, uh, the here and now, and was, and you said we were here before, the here and now was here before we even had a body. So I connected that all with that passage, and uh, I think this, you said everything so beautifully, it was so understood completely. I just want to thank you for that. I'm glad, Joni, that you're able to join us uh, from that distant country that you're in. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And that we can still uh, be sharing these ideas together. Thanks, Joni. Thank you. Roger's coming up, and I can't stop him. (laughs) All right, and then I have a question from Susanna. Hi, my name is Roger. Um, uh, impression I got from this talk, um, and a lot lately, is the more I do this work, the more the world tries to take me away from it. I mean, it, it is it is absolutely incredible. I mean people reaching out, job opportunities, this, come to back to the world. <clears throat> and, but I, there's something in me that goes, no, that's, that's, that's not the right way. I, I need to do this work and not go back into that, I don't know what to call it, deep sleep of 
society. Um, I, I don't know really what else to say, but that, that is just something that I'm seeing right now. And uh, this work is the most important thing that could ever be for me, so. Indeed. Kate? <laughs> I'm afraid to come on. <laughs> I'm afraid to keep the broadcast going too long. Um, I do have a question that came in from Susanna. I just sent it over to you. All right. Um, so Susanna sent the first part of this at, towards the end of the talk when you were talking about the exercise. She said, can you repeat what we are to say to ourselves? And then later she says, and why does my mind escape, busy myself when Guy is about to give a crucial sentence? <laughs> that is why I keep asking for Guy to repeat the exercises over and over. I'm observing my mind as it escapes. First, I'll start at the back and then move the other way. What a great experience it is. I don't know that it ever really comes to an end. Maybe at a much deeper level of development. But you've all had the experience where you knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that something was true and you could feel it. You heard the roar and the next thing you know, you're back in the dirt grubbing around. And you can't, and you can't even remember what it was that you remembered. Now, how is that possible? something that was so true and pure and sweet and I wanted to stay there for the rest of my life. And then it, not only is it gone, but I can't even remember what it was that came. <laughs> How do you explain that? Look, you know the popping's coming. Just relax. You need to relax. How come I can't remember that? Because I am a slave to my functions. Now, if I can suddenly remember something and then it's gone, is it gone? Or am I just momentarily partnered with something that wants no part of that? That's what it is. I, I'm just, I was, I heard a roar, the resonation was there, and then, <laughs> food, me, mine, next, where, what, how come. Do that, it might help you remember. <laughs> But I can remember sooner. You have a taste of something and at a certain point, the taste of everything else just doesn't cut it. So that's number one. And can you repeat what we say to ourselves? As far as I know, the whole talk is called remember Remember sooner. I need in these moments, Susanna, if you, I'm using words again, I need to remember that my heart, meaning what do I feel, my emotions, my mind, what are all these thoughts flying through, and my body that registers their relationship in some form of tension, I need to remember all of that has to be here and now. I must be fully present. In the end, the whole of this teaching 
is about remembering yourself instead of letting a self that is inside of you remember who you are for you. The whole of that is the reversal. I can talk and will talk until this body falls off. But the fact of the matter is, this is what you are going to work at. And you'll work at it as you see the need to remember sooner. You'll want to do something else with your life than you do now. Your life, by and large, is in the pursuit of avoiding discomfort and securing pleasure. That's what your life is about. It is a mind that remembers it doesn't want this experience because it's painful and it doesn't know what else to do. It doesn't know how to use pain, so it remembers what it needs to do to escape it. It doesn't know what to do with friction. It doesn't know what to do with enemies, so it remembers to avoid the moments that create it. We want to bring all of that together, Susanna. You stay close. It takes place naturally if you'll just continue with your wish and your work. Katie? All right. I was just about to say we can close it up, but then another hand went up. Okay. That's fine. That's why we're here. All right. Robert, you're unmuted. Thank you. Uh, Good morning. I guess it's good afternoon there now. Hi, Robert. Um, Hey, how you doing, Guy? Good Good. to speak to you. Um, It seems to me that there's an emotional component to this. Because I know when I'm able to remember myself, I face myself in a different way. Mm. And just like mindfulness, don't look back, there's an emotional component to that. And I wonder if you might speak to that. Quite definitively, there is an emotional component to it. Let me come at it this way, Robert. I trust you'll understand, and I trust everybody here will understand. I believe that balance is something that I need to remember. that I need to remember when I'm thrown off balance how to restore balance. He says this, I need to remember what I do to get rid of the sense of imbalance. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. I need to remember what to do to make sure I don't go with it. So that our mind, ha, I don't have it in my, (laughs) so that my mind, is never apart from my heart. And my mind and heart is never apart from my body. It is a singularity discovered and experienced in quotes in the here and now. Whereas we have no balance now because of a a disparity, if you want to use that word, because of an inequity, an an unequal relationship between my my predilection because of my predilection, which I didn't create. For instance, some of you are are just physically oriented, just a body, 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 food, 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 go, go, go. Now, this is spectacular. You should find this interesting, not troublesome. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm body-based, some of us, (laughs) <laughs> I, I am and by the way a whole talk is coming on this what you call feeling isn't feeling what you call feeling is sensation sensations are not feelings so some of us are sensation I'm, I'm going to keep talking sensation or, and some of us mentally that's what I am just mind go mind 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 now I fail to see that the mind the heart and the body that they're all interconnected and everything that's passing through any one of them is creating associations with the rest and bringing together this God forsaken misbegotten amalgamation of functions of parts of myself and each one's struggling to do what Robert 
Each one struggling to get the others in balance. Please, do you see it? I'm not making this up. You're meant to see all this. So something keeps trying to make everybody else toe the line. Why do you want people to toe the line? Because they've messed with your balance. If you have balance, it can't be messed with. So I, I, I need not try to figure out where my emotion should be in this or where my mind should be in this or where my body should be in this. What I want is to be in the awareness whose intelligence has already seen to the balance of these parts of myself. And if I enter into that balance, I enter into the heart of the cross. I enter right into the, the very moment itself, which cannot be separated from what is timeless when it intersects what is in time. And that's the balance, isn't it? And everything else is left and right. A couple of, I was talking to a couple of men yesterday about this when I was out hacking it up on the golf course. It was unbelievable. See, that's what's fantastic. That how, can, how can what one does be unbelievable? Do you not? I mean, forget me hacking it up yesterday. How, how can that be unbelievable? And where does your pain come from? That's unbelievable inconceivable as they said in the princess bride well no it's not that's what is and if I can see what is instead of say it's unbelievable and not want what is then I have a chance to remember sooner what is creating what I call unbelievable then what's unbelievable becomes useful to me as opposed to a punishment Kate anything else no, 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 no. I think we can wrap it up. <laughs> then I will say. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs>